Hey everybody and welcome to another piano video here on the Miriam Pianos on YouTube channel. We are looking at yet another piano VST plugin today. Uh, this is a whole exciting world that we are loving diving into. It's something that we all individually have had quite a bit of experience with, uh, but never have we tackled it here on the channel and it's really cool to find out how many people on the other end of this camera are also enjoying uh, touching on this area of music creation. So uh, we're just going to keep going with this stuff. In today's video, we're going to be looking at Alicia's Keys. That's not Alicia Keys, it's Alicia's Keys. This is a plugin uh, that was released uh, under the Native Instruments banner within their universe of plugins. It is actually based on Alicia Keys personal Yamaha Neo C3 piano. So we'll be talking about how they came up with the plugin, obviously letting you sample how it sounds, looking at the interface, uh, and discussing who this might be best suited for. If it's the first time that you stopped by to see us here, we'd really appreciate if you did subscribe and hit the notification bell either now or at the end of the video, either one works for us. So without further ado, let's get started with Alicia's keys right away. There's a couple of odd things that struck me about this plugin, um, but then there's also uh, some qualities of the plugin that I appreciate. Um, and also, uh, in, in before we finally start listening to it, uh, we need to understand where it sits uh, price-wise with the ecosystem of all the other plugins out there. It's one of the cheapest. It's not super cheap. It's not like ten bucks. Uh, I think. Uh, native instruments if you buy it on sale or you know regular price or whatever it's gonna float anywhere in the 75 to 100 dollar range so um, not the cheapest but it, it's a far cry from the top packages that you can get from Garretin uh, or Keyscape or Piano Tech or anything like that so in some ways it's not necessarily competing with those uh, top top level uh, plugins um, the piano being a six foot one instrument is pretty unusual uh, for uh, this world. And I say that because almost all of the other plugins that you can get out there are emulating, in the case of uh, Piano Tech, or sampling uh, nine foot, or usually the smallest you get is the seven foot, uh, and then you jump down into uh, the uprights or the roads or anything like that. It's pretty unusual to actually get a five or a six foot piano uh, that's sampled for this purpose. And I think there's some good reasons for that. Uh, so not speaking about this plugin generally, but you know why you would not normally build a sample library around a six foot piano. Uh, it is an imperfect size for a grand piano. Um, obviously, if space is not an issue and budget is not, not an issue, it's an imperfect size. The shorter you get a grand piano, uh, the thicker the bass strings need to be so that you can still achieve those lower frequencies and the thicker you make a bass string the more unwanted or uncontrolled harmonics those bass strings get the less uh, the clarity of those fundamental tones is therefore you know uh, preserved uh, and you kind of get this shift of where the tonal center of the piano uh, sits comfortably uh, just slowly starts creeping up the piano the smaller the instrument gets on a, a you know on a Bechstein D282 which has a particularly clear bass um, you know Busendorfer Imperial will be another one that has a really particularly clear bass uh, you can play uh, you know a lower C triad uh, two octaves below middle C and you can still very clearly hear each individual note speaking you do that on any six foot 
grand piano. I don't care what the brand is and it's just not happening. Like the physics are not on your side. Um, having said that, uh, there is a specific character quality, even if it is on a technical level an imperfect one, it's still a character, it's still uh, you know, a sound that you get with a shorter grand piano that I suppose in some cases would be desired. And in those cases, well, here's maybe the plug-in for you. What they've done is they have mic'd up uh, Alicia's personal piano, uh, I think even in her personal studio, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and they've done 12 layers, 12 sample layers per key, uh, which is uh, quite good. I mean, you've got some sample uh, libraries that's down at, at eight, so 12 is, is nothing to sniff at or snuff at or whatever that expression is. In the context of newer releases, this doesn't feel innovative, but it still, you know, keeps up. The piano uh, interface is fairly basic, and when you're using it within Logic, or specifically when you're losing, using it within the contact player, uh, there is one uh, kind of bone of contention for me in terms of uh, interface, which is that you wind up with presets that are built in uh, to the UI down here, but then you've got the normal way of accessing presets uh, that you're used to with with uh, contact. So it'd be kind of nice if that wasn't the case, but it's not a big deal. Just use one or the other, don't use both, or you are likely to get a little bit confused. So let's listen to the dry sound of the Alicia Keys uh, Yamaha C3 Neo. There's something super familiar about playing on a really well sampled six foot because if I'm anything like 99% of most piano players out there, the opportunities to play on a really great nine foot are kind of slim. So even if that's the ideal sonic goal, it's not what you're often used to.
So there's a ton of character that this is picking up. And in a super technical sense, it's the imperfections of what you often get on a six foot piano. And even though this is a C3 Neo, meaning it's kind of unique and interesting uh, body design, case design, it's definitely not considered uh, one of the top six foot pianos on the planet. I mean, you've got Fazioli uh, F183s, you've got just the ridiculous, uh, like the Siebeckstein A192, which is just like stupid good. you're getting a lot of this character coming through. Even the break that you normally get on a shorter piano, that transition between steel strings to the copper strings. With all the warts and all, like, it's all there. You do feel connected to this plugin. Let's hear some of the presets. Small studio. Big studio. It's quite responsive too. Now the settings that all of those presets are manipulating are stuff that we now just expect a second nature, but let's give this plugin some, uh, I don't know, posthumous credit. Uh, back in 2008, this was not really considered that mainstream to give you these types of controls. I mean, certainly in the digital piano world, it was uncommon to have that level of control over an acoustic piano engine. Uh, Roland was doing uh, some of this with their uh, early uh, Supernatural engine. Uh, Kawhi was doing a little bit of it with the uh, harmonic imaging, but not to this extent. So, uh, you know, this would have been pretty cool 12 years ago. Now it's, it, as I said, this is super mainstream. You've got your digital ambience, which is kind of a, a, a cheapy form of reverb. 
then you've got your convolution reverb, which was still fairly new. I mean, I think the, the best and the earliest convolution reverb uh, plugins that were coming out would have been in the early 2000s. Uh, I remember when that became like a big, big, big thing. Um, people were talking about impulses and all that stuff. You've got some pedal control, resonance control, and a little bit of noise uh, if you want that. But for the most part, it's just a nice, clean sample set of a six foot piano. Uh, I don't think that you're gonna be able to get away with only using this plugin uh, without additional plugins. Like there's no EQ on here. Um, you probably would uh, be able to find a nicer reverb uh, to go on there at this point. So you, want, you may wind up with a few extra uh, plugins uh, in your channel strip along with this, but if you're looking for that sound, a super intimate sound where you want some character to it, which in some uh, ways is the same reason some people go for an upright piano when you don't want a perfect tone, you don't want this huge cavernous sound that's, that the nine foots uh, are known for, and you want something that feels a little more intimate, a little more weathered. Uh, this might be a nice halfway point between an upright sound, which can sort of be overly affected at times, um, and a grand that just sounds too, too perfect. This is neither. This really does uh, kind of fit uh, halfway in between, um, and it's not pretending to be anything it's not. So I would say that there's a place, even in 2021, 2022, for this plugin. I mean, if you uh, are one of the lucky ones who have the bucks to shell out for the full Native Instruments uh, ultimate package, you know, the, uh, the contact bundle uh, type things, I think this comes with it anyway, so it's not an extra spend. If you were thinking about spending the extra bucks on this, it may still be worth it uh, to have that tool in the toolbox. As I said, it, it, it is unique for that reason. Um, and I didn't really know what to expect. I kind of was expecting, uh, I, I guess, something that wouldn't stand up to much scrutiny and had sort of been put out under a celebrity nameplate because, ah, you know, goodness knows there's enough of those out there where it's like, eh, it's not that good. And really, I just bought this because I recognized the name. I don't think so in this case. I see some, uh, most certainly see some merit uh, with this plugin. Anyway, hope you have enjoyed uh, this look at Alicia's keys. Uh, we certainly hope that you will stick around and take a look at even more plugins along around the channel. Uh, but we don't stop there. We are gigantic piano nerds here on YouTube at Marion Pianos, and we cover acoustic pianos of all shapes and sizes, digital pianos of all shapes and sizes. Uh, and so spend a little bit of time, get to know us more, and by all means, let us know, get to know you. Drop us a comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell uh, if you've enjoyed what you see so you get back for more view videos in the future. My name is Stu Harrison. We'll see you again soon.